we will rejoice and be glad in it. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we, who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit, 
Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The psalm for today is Psalm 118. We will say it together in unison. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me, and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God.
the Gospel according to John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. She ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. She said to her, he said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said to these things to her, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Thursday night, Friday, Friday night, Saturday, Saturday night, Sunday morning. During this time, the disciples experienced many, many different feelings, experienced moments that were agony to them. By Thursday night, as Jesus had been arrested, most were hiding. They were hiding out of fear, fear that the Romans might arrest them as they did Jesus. They hid, trying to protect themselves. They hid out of guilt. They really believed that, that they would die with Jesus, that they, would, that they would hang in there with him. And the guilt of running away was heavy on their soul. They hid out of shame. Is this really who I've become? Peter, who thought that he would die with Jesus and never deny him. And Peter saying, is this who I have become? Judas, is this who I have become? And the other disciples, the apostles, feeling the same way, they are not who they thought they were. They also were living with this doubt. Was Jesus a fraud? 
Did he pretend to be the Messiah and we were duped into believing him? They hid with all of these different emotions and thoughts in their heart and their mind and their soul. See, they thought that they were going to ride into Jerusalem, take over the palace, put Jesus on the throne, get rid of the Romans. King Herod would be no more. They would take power. And God would once more rule the nation of Israel. They didn't understand that this wasn't about Roman rule. It wasn't about Caesar or Pilate or King Herod. It wasn't about the Pharisees, the Sadducees, or the Sanhedrin. No, something much bigger was going on that they could not see. Jesus tried to explain it to them, tried to tell them. But until you've experienced something, it's hard to understand. And once they experience this morning, this Easter morning, they will begin to grasp the significance of what they have walked through these last three days. See, what's really happening is this. God is reclaiming his creation. God is reclaiming the universe. God is reclaiming human souls. God is reclaiming all that is. In reclaiming creation, God does not sacrifice Jesus. In reclaiming creation, God does not sacrifice us. The Jews did not sacrifice Jesus. The Romans did not sacrifice Jesus. Jesus gave his self up, gave his own life over for something much bigger than Roman rule, than King Herod or anything else on earth. Jesus offered himself as a sacrifice so that God could reclaim all that was created. In this self-offering, the two evils, the two wrongs are conquered, sin and death. Sin and death, which corrupt and destroy God's creation. Jesus offers himself as sacrifice. And sin and death are conquered, and all things are made new in his resurrection. This self-offering, God vindicates Jesus by raising him from the dead. And if the cross was the sacrifice for sin, the resurrection is the sacrifice to conquer death. There is much more going on here than the disciples, the apostles, the Pharisees, or anyone envisioned. Sin and death is conquered, and we are reclaimed by God. Reclaiming the souls, reclaiming the life, reclaiming all that is. Sometimes it's difficult for us to see the bigger picture, the thing that God is really doing in this world, in this universe. We have our eyes so focused on our individual enemies, our individual fears, our individual guilts, that we forget that what God is doing through Jesus Christ is eradicating all those things that separate us from the love of God, that in Jesus Christ, through his death and resurrection, in our baptism into that death and resurrection, we share in that victory, and we are a part of the new creation that God is reclaiming today. And to remind ourselves that there is something much bigger going on on this day of resurrection. As Father Frank read the sermon of St. Chrysostom last night, I want to end with just a section of that sermon. St. Chrysostom said, Hell took a body and discovered God. Hell took earth and encountered heaven. Hell took what it saw and was overcome by what it did not see. O death, where is your sting? O hell, where is your victory? Christ is risen, and you, O death, 
are annihilated. Christ is risen, and the evil ones are cast down. Christ is risen, and the angels rejoice. Christ is risen, and life is liberated. Christ is risen, and the tomb is emptied of its dead. For Christ, having risen from the dead, has become the firstfruits of those who have fallen asleep. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now let us confess our common faith by saying the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people for today is Form 6. It is found in your bulletin or in your, on page 392 of the Book of Common Prayer. For the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem and the people of the land of the Holy One. For the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Holy Family Houston, Lord of the Streets Houston, and Northside Church Plant Houston. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who suffer for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Archbishop Justin, for our presiding Bishop Michael, and our bishops Andrew, Jeff, Kay and Hector, for this gathering and for all bishops and other ministers. We also pray for our seminarian, Elisa Stebbing, and for her family, and for all the holy people of God. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation and those of others, praying together for those in our parish prayer list. Angel, Donna, George B., and Oliver. We invite you now, uh, even on your devices, your computers, your screens, to share with us your own personal intercessions and thanksgivings at this time.
Pray for those serving in the armed forces and for their families, especially those soldiers that are affected by the virus at this time. Pray, too, for all the victims of natural and man-made disasters, particularly when you're thinking of those during this time where we're all shut in as we try to protect one another from catching this virus. Pray, too, for all those who are responding, the medical workers and everyone that's helping life to carry on at this time. Pray for our own parish and for our faithfulness to the missions and ministries that you have entrusted to us. Pray, too, for the children of the world who suffer and for those who are alone and have no one to pray for them. Hear us, Lord, for your, for your mercy, mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. For those serving in front lines of this virus. We will exalt you, O God our King, and, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them, who put, put their, their trust, trust in you. Almighty God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son for the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And since we are unable to gather around the altar for the sacrament, let us pray together the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you because you are already present and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Good morning and happy Easter. Just a couple of announcements before um, we move forward. Continue to celebrate this resurrection for the next 50 days. Easter is a 50-day season, and I hope that we will continue to shout songs of Alleluia as we walk this time of Easter. All on the Sundays, until further notice, we will have a 9 o'clock Children's Liturgy of the Word service, and then our Sunday service will be at 10 o'clock and Facebook, and so we invite you to come and participate in those two services. Also want to let you know that in the uh, walkway of the Children's Ministry Building, there are still Easter eggs available. And if you would like to pick some up, um, keeping social distance, please be, uh, feel free to come and pick some of those Easter eggs up. And with that, I would like to uh, offer blessing for those of you who have birthdays or anniversaries this week. If you do have a birthday or anniversary, please stand so that we may offer a blessing. O oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, in your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen.
Angels Hallelujah Chorus. Uh, the words are in the bulletin. Let's stand. If you know it, sing out. And if you don't know it, sing out.